evening, sir or madam. Hello, Bert. It's Bertrand, sir. Unzip me this banana, will you? Certainly, sir. <laughs> Would there be any lady gorillas in there, Bert? Hard to tell, sir, unless one is dancing with them. Not always possible, even then, sir. Uh, please, sir, if you don't mind. <laughs> See you, Bert. Just in time to help me do my necklace. I'm having awful trouble because of my mittens. Come on, darling, I'm in a hurry. I want me to wear the necklace, don't you? George, for... What the... and welcome to the last Who Done It in the present series. Now, you've just seen a robbery and a lady who has now ceased to be a member of the Bunny Club. We want you to work out who done it. And to ask the questions for you, this week's guest are a man who's never knocked the opportunity of asking questions, Mr. Huey Green. <laughs> uh, one of the few men not to have been discovered by Opportunity Knocks, uh, Mr. Alfred Marks. <laughs> Have you noticed how often the lady panellist gets it right? So let's see now how the lovely Dawn Adams gets on. Uh, our next guest has offered to go three rounds with the gorilla, Mr. Jackie Pallow. <laughs> right, well, that's our panel. We've also selected four people from our studio audience to try and solve who done it. So welcome, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Now, don't forget that when you see the suspect stories in flashback, one or more of them could be lying, so don't believe everything that you see or hear. Right, let's go back to what I hope is a fancy dress party. Now, some of you may have worked out that the gorilla did it, but don't congratulate yourself yet. There are a lot of gorillas about. She's dead. Now, don't move or touch anything. Oh, no. I'd better go and tell Mr. George. No, you don't. You leave this to me. Now you go back downstairs and don't mention this to anyone. I'll be down in a moment. Well, I now should... Now go on, man. Do what I say. Well, join the party. Uh, uh, Mr. Gibbs, I I'd just like a word with you for, the, for a moment. Mr. Gibbs, I'm afraid something very serious has happened to your wife. What's that, then? She's not drank again, is she? She's dead. She's what? This is what? She is dead upstairs, and all the jewellery has gone. But what were you doing? What was you hired for? I was hired against a possible robbery. I wasn't expecting this. I have to stop the party. Oh, what's Who going sat on? for that? Uh, ladies, ladies and gentlemen, 
I'm ex-detective Chief Inspector Wills of the Yard, oh. and I'm here tonight at the request of an insurance company to keep an eye on Mrs. Gibbs's jewelry. Well done. <laughs> There's been a robbery. Oh, can't be. And I'm sorry to have to tell you that Mrs. Gibbs is dead. What? Well, Liz? Yes, yes sir. Hey, quiet, everyone. Quiet, quiet. Where, where's Mr. Gibbs? I think he went upstairs. I'd rather you didn't touch anything. Mr. Gibbs, I've already telephoned for the police. What's this? Huh? Oh, looks like some kind of press fastening. Yes. It looks like a fastening from a fancy dress outfit. Whodunit and our panel of experts who are trying to find out who is running around dressed as a gorilla and killing off rabbits. But before we rejoin the action, let me dress up the story so far to make sure that you haven't missed anything. A fancy dress party is in full swing. Upstairs, a gorilla is stealing some jewellery and is interrupted by the hostess. Suddenly, she notices her jewellery is missing and she is killed in the struggle. The body is discovered by Bertram, the butler, and a clown. The clown is really ex-detective chief inspector Wills, who has been especially hired to look after the jewellery. The host, George Gibbs, finds a press fastening in the bedroom. And now Wills carries on with his investigation. It looks like a fastening from a fancy dress outfit. to stay in the room until the police arrive. Yes, but look at me. No, no, please, please do as I ask. Oh, very well. No, no, please, please don't change. I'd like everything as it was. Well, I don't know about you, dear, but my makeup's melting. Yes, well, uh, just the top half. Mm. I will be in charge until the police arrive. That's rich. Weren't you the fellow that was drummed out a few years ago on the take, wasn't it? You see, I've got a very good memory. That was never proved. I left of my own accord. Well, since your memory is so good, what have your movements been over the last three hours? Well, that's not difficult. I... Name? You already know all our names. Well, let's do it properly, shall we? I'm Richard Duncan. I'm George's accountant. Weren't you involved in a case of fraud around 1960? Yeah. Now you see, I've got a good memory too, sir. Now, what time did you arrive here? I must have been the last day. It must have been around 8.30. It was just uh, 8.10, sir. Thank you, Bertrand. Well? Well, what? Well, what happened after that? I had nothing. I came in here and joined the party. Haven't you missed something out? Like what? Like not coming into the room and creeping off upstairs to see my wife. I'll tell you what happened. Instead of coming in and joining the party, he looked around, seeing that Liz wasn't here, he backed out. He went up the stairs and I followed him. And then he went into the bedroom. I waited outside just to see how long this little meeting would last. It wasn't the first time I met secretly. After a couple of minutes or so, he left. He came down the stairs and joined the rest of us in the party room. 
Well, she went in after me and did it, just for revenge. Never mind about that now, sir. Did you go in to see your wife? No, I didn't. But I do remember one thing. The back of his costume was slightly open. Almost as if there was a fastening missing. Well, do you mind if I have a look at the back of your costume? Certainly. I don't see the point of all this. The point is, sir, that you have a fastener missing. And Mr. Gibbs found one in Mrs. Gibbs's dressing room. You mean he says he found it? How do you know he didn't pick it off down here and plant it? It's the sort of place that a violent movement of the arms might tug at, isn't it? I'm Lawrence Porter. The actor. A deadbeat, an out-of-work actor. I bet he could do with a few diamonds. Yes, well, that will be all for now, sir. Mr. Porter, hmm? perhaps you could tell us about your movements. Yes, certainly. I arrived at about uh, 7.30, but unfortunately Parkinson here was late. What time did you arrive, Parkinson? Yes, well, well never, never mind the audition. Uh, just the tyres. Sorry. Be quiet, Parkinson. Queen Victoria is not amused. All right, all right, I'm sorry. No, I arrived at about uh, 7.30. I came in here, I had a couple of drinks, and then well, I decided it was about time for Parkinson's entrance, so I went out to the car. And as I turned to come back, I looked up and I saw Elizabeth at the window in her bunny outfit. Then I saw George in his gorilla drag, and he drew the bedroom curtains. Then I came back in, and uh, oh, Parkinson joined the party at about 8.15. Didn't you, Parkinson? Yes, I did. Yes, I... thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, tell me, uh, who was the first to arrive here? I suppose it was me. You see, I uh, aren't was... Aren't you... Aren't you Lucy Webb, the model? Well, I'm not Yogi Bear. Yes, I am. Uh, <coughs> I realize then. Uh, just tell me what happened. Well, I told you I came straight from work and, um... Modeling? What else? What a funny man. Now, where was I? Ah, oh, you're absolutely right. I arrived at 6.30. I had a terrible shock when I saw the gorilla's outfit on the back of the door. And then George came in and he asked me if I wanted to wear it. After that, I spent the rest of the time in here, dancing with my lovely gorilla. Mm. Richard can vouch for that, can't you, dear? Would you like some of my honey? Mr. Gibbs, why did you get a spare costume? Well, sometimes you get a gate crasher, and this time I was prepared. Uh, Lucy Webb said you left the spare room first. Where did you go? Like she said, to the front door. No, 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 she didn't say where you went. Just that you left. Well, that's where I went, to the front door. I see. Well, it's still raining slightly outside. It wasn't raining when the party started. Why is it, Mr. Cross, that your fur is still wet? What is it? Oh, yes, it is. I, uh, I popped back home for a moment. We live just next door. It was, um, well, just over an hour ago. It was about eight o'clock. Did you forget something? No, I was looking for Janet, my wife. I went out by the back door. I, I didn't want to be seen. Janet wasn't there, so I came back. On my way back, I saw another gorilla. He was at the front of the house where the cars were parked. As I came in through the back door, Janet was just coming down the stairs. Just where had you been, Mrs. Cross? I don't remember. Excuse me, sir. I saw Mrs. Cross and someone in the spare room, sir. Oh, yes, that's right. 
Well, you see, I was feeling a little sticky, so I went in there to cool off a bit. Thank when you. I arrived in the spare room, George was already there. He said he'd also come to cool off. He helped me off with my mask. <laughs> he cooled me off, then he left, and a few moments later I came down. Must have been just after eight. It was all perfectly harmless, I can assure you. Yes, I'm sure. Uh, Mr. Porter, hmm? where were you around that time? At what time? Eight fifteen-ish. Well, as I told you, I went outside to the car to fetch Parkinson here. Then I came back in. I made a long-distance telephone call to Dublin. It took rather a long time because I reversed the charges. Who did you telephone? Well, I'm afraid I can't tell you because I got through, they accepted the call, and then it turned out to be a wrong number. So I just gave up. I thought I'd try again later. And you don't know the wrong number that you got? No, I don't. Thank you. Mr. Gibbs, Lucy Webb said you left the spare room first, and you said you went to the front door. Who was there? Uh, it was just a motorist. He'd, his engine had overheated, and he asked, could we let him have some water? So. I see. Right, then. Now, we all know that... That'll be the police, sir. I'll let them in. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you, Bertram. Well, I think I have all the answers for them. That is the point where Will's worked out who done it. The question is, have you? But first, let us welcome our suspects. Welcome. <laughs> now, panel, before you start asking questions, you can have 20 seconds of the action replayed. Ladies first, as always, Dawn, is there any part of the action that you'd like to see replayed? Well, the only, I, the only thing I couldn't see was the time on the clock. That won't take long, will it? No, have some more. Go on. No, I don't want any more. <laughs> You just want to see the time on the clock? Yes. Well, so you shall. Thank time you. on the clock for Dawn Adams. Right, Huey Green, what would you like to see? May I please see the murder again? Yes, indeed, you may. You'd like to see the whole murder? The, um... Yes, the murder. We'll give you as much of it as possible to make up for the little of Dawn's. Thank you. Right. Well, mine comes into his, so it'll be all right. We can no, have no, it together can, between us. The clock is shown several times. We'll probably show you lots of clocks. Oh, lots of I times. see. Alfred Marx, what would you like to see? Uh, there are two girls on the, uh, concerned with this, because I'd like to see their legs again. <laughs> <laughs> Any particular part? Do you mean the clothes? From the, the ankle to the top, please. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see if we can find that. What Thank else? Thank you very much. What else? There must be something else you'd like to see. Uh, no, actually, I, I'm, I'm confused with the second uh, uh, shot of the clock. There were two shots of the clock. The first shot I knew was, uh, was 8, 8, 10. I wasn't sure about the second clock shot. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see that, please, if I may. The second clock shot? Thank you. Anything else? Before or after? For me, no Ooh. thank you, no, no. I right. have the foggiest idea, and I won't know in <laughs> five minutes' time. <laughs> <laughs> Jackie Pallow, what would you like to see again? Uh, I'd like to see the bit where the one of the gorillas goes out to the car explaining what he did and he had a wet he had, his fur was wet but the car wasn't I'd like to see that again ah very well observed mr. fellow yes indeed fine good well now while we're finding these replays let's start with some questions shall we Huey Green a question I'd like to ask Mr. Gibbs a question. Do I ask Mr. Gibbs or, or you, John? Ask Mr. Gibbs. He's there. Right. Mr. Gibbs, um, you had in your house, you had a, a spare monkey suit or gorilla suit. Is that correct? That's right, yeah. And was that being used that evening or was it used at the time of the murder? I don't know whether it was used at the time of the murder, but basically it was there just as a spare suit in case somebody came, you know, without a suit and that was there for them. I see, but you couldn't testify as to whether or not it was used at the time that you found your wife dead. I had no idea, no. I see. Thank you, John. Very legal jargon, sir. Well, I mean, <laughs> we're doing the drama as well. <laughs> Anything else you'd like to ask? 
Yes, I'd like to ask ex-detective uh, Inspector Wills if he checked to see if that spare suit was used. No, I didn't. So nobody knew, I put this to all of you, nobody knew whether or not that suit was used. I mean, did any of you wear it? Did you wear it, Mr. Porter? No. Did you? Uh, well, you wouldn't, Mr. Cross. Did, uh, did, uh, did you, uh, Mr. Holly? No, no. I see. Thank you. Alfie Marks. Yes. Well, there's so many red herrings, I'm tempted to think it was a red herring disguised as a gorilla. <laughs> um, <laughs> first of all, a very nasty lot of people. I wouldn't ask them to my party for a yeah. start. Uh, yes. Now, um, Detective, ex-Detective Wills, m m could you elaborate a little as to why you left the force, uh, Mr. Wills? Well, I did 18 years with the uh, Metropolitan Police, and uh, I was charged with... Uh, taking bribes and I went on trial at the Old Bailey and I was found not guilty. Not guilty. Yeah, and I was so disgusted with the whole business that I resigned from the force. Thank you very much, Mr. Kipps, thank you. A very uh, commendable sentiment. I'd like thank to you ask the, the rabbit a question, if I may. Um, where was he when all this was going on? Part of the time I was in the root of a car, <laughs> which was highly hot and very disgusting, and the rest of the time, I was with my master, whom I adore. Uh, I would rush to state that the word uh, aster, of course, is a ventriloquial term. Absolutely, yes. I mean, uh, that goes without, uh, without aing. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, uh, yes. All right. Pardon? Not really. I'm not satisfied with that answer at all. Well... Um, Hang fire, let Dawn Adams uh, yes. ask a question. Uh, <clears throat> I, I, I seem to remember, Mr. Gibbs, that you were looking out of the window when they came in to talk to you about the murder. Is that right? No, I wasn't actually looking out of the window. Well, I, was, I was looking at the window. You were looking at the window and the curtains were open. Were they? Well, uh, they, they were as far as I remember on the, on the, on the little I saw of it. Now... Mr. Porter, actor, yeah. you say you saw that George draw the curtains at about 7.30. You saw him close them. You said so. Not at 7.30, no. Ah. I arrived at the party at 7.30 and then this And then you went been... out to get your bunny, That's Robert. That's it, yes. And you went to get your bunny and when you went to get your bunny you saw him draw the curtains. That's right, and that, yes. I just wanted to be quite sure about that. That was all. Um, Thank you. Is that Jackie Pallow? Right. Mr. Gibbs, you said you see Mr. Duncan, you waited outside the room, and he was in there for a couple of minutes. That is correct? That's absolutely right. And the yeah. clock downstairs said ten past eight, and when the girl, when the woman, your wife was murdered, the clock upstairs, being upside down, said quarter past eight. What happened to the other three minutes? Well, I mean, I... I can't say that one clock downstairs was absolutely right and the one upstairs was absolutely wrong. I don't know. But you can be absolutely sure it was only a couple of minutes that... Mr. If someone was in the room with your wife, Mr. Pello, you'd know it was only a couple of minutes, wouldn't you? <laughs> if it was in there with my wife, it'd be less than a couple of minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Jackie Pello. Thank you very much. Now, I'm going to stop the questioning for a moment because we're now ready for the first replay. <coughs> The first replay is for Dawn Adams, and she'd like to see what the time was on the clock at the beginning of the party. So watch carefully. Here it comes. Unzip me this banana, will you? Certainly, sir. <laughs> Would there be any lady gorillas in there, Bert? Hard to tell, sir, unless one is dancing with them. Not even, always possible, even then, sir. Uh, uh, please, sir, if you don't mind, sir. <laughs> see you, Bert. There. Does that make you feel better? It doesn't make me feel better, but at least I know what time it was. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Right. Now, let's have a question from Huey Green. Um, I'd, I'd like to ask Mr. Porter a question. Of course. Um, <coughs> Mr. Porter, you said that you went out at around about half past seven. Is that correct? No, no, no. I arrived at half past seven. Arrived at half past seven. So you went out sometime around <clears throat> what time? I should say, oh, about... Five to eight, 
8 o'clock, somewhere around there. I see. I'd like to ask you another question. You said that you made a reverse charges call to Ireland, is that correct? Yes. And you say that the person wasn't there? Yeah. Well, then why should they have accepted the reverse charges call if they weren't there? Ask me another. I don't know. I think you said it was They just said number. yes. They'd, they said they'd accept the call. Then after they'd accepted the call, I spoke to someone. Heaven knows who it was. Maybe they were having they a party too and they didn't hear, <laughs> you see. We're ready for the next replay. On a party line. <laughs> <laughs> this, uh, this replay is for Huey Green. He'd like to see the murder in Mr. and Mrs. Gibbs's boudoir. Here it comes. George, you're just in time to help me do my necklace. I'm having awful trouble because of my mittens. Come on, darling, I'm in a hurry. I want me to wear the necklace, don't you? George, for... What the... Did that help you at all? Yes, may I, may I ask something? No, <coughs> not for this minute. I'm going down the line. Right. I'd like to ask Dawn Adams right. if she has any more questions. Um... There was a point uh, where Lucy uh, was dancing with somebody. No, they were, you were fiddling with each other's costumes. What were you doing, Lucy? Well, it was terribly hot in those costumes. No, I'm not talking about upstairs when you... I'm talking about down in the party, that's right. I was helping him out of his costume. You were helping him out of hmm. his costume, I see. Or you could have been helping him into a costume. I was helping him out of it. You were helping him out mm -hmm. of his costume. Who was he helping? Uh, remind me who you were helping. My gorilla. My well, lucky gorilla. gorilla. I mean, you, uh, he had a face. Did he have a, he had a, a mask on? Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. He had a mask on. Mm -hmm. It was her own special gorilla. It was her own special yes. gorilla, right. Ready for the next replay. This is Alfred Marx's. He would like to see the second shot of the clock after the murder. <laughs> on its side, but you saw the time all right. <coughs> Thank you. Good. Here comes the last replay, then. This is for Jackie Pallow, who would like to see the gorilla returning from outside uh, when he'd been standing there by the car. <coughs> Here it is, Jackie. Janet wasn't there, so I came back. On my way back, I saw another gorilla. He was at the front of the house where the cars were parked. that answer your suspicion, Jackie? <coughs> yes. It does? Yes. Oh, good. We have time for one minute of fast questions. Far away. Mr. Cross and Mr. Duncan, are you wearing the same underwear now that you were wearing at the time of the murder? Yes, yes. I am. You are. Thank yes, you. Yes, I am. Alfred Marks. Why wasn't the inspector, in, Detective Inspector Wills, if you were supposed to be looking after the jury, why weren't you up there looking after the jury rather than driving and jigging around? Yes, well, you know, I am a human being, and uh, I do love, you know, to dance with a few birds occasionally. But actually, I was doing my own thing at that time of it, you know? <laughs> I was, you know, myself, really. Thank you. Yes. Dawn Adams? Uh, <laughs> uh, Mr Duncan, you apparently uh, were convicted for fraud. You're an accountant? That's right. Yeah. That's right. Were you the accountant to the Gibbs family? Yes, that's what I am you, at the moment. The accountant of the Gibbs family. And when, what year, how long before the crime did this take place? How long before the... This crime, this, this crime, evening? The fraud. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, eight years ago now. Eight years before. Mm -hmm. I see. Jackie Pallow. Right, Mr Cross, you said you went out to the car which got your skin wet. The car... That is correct. <coughs> I, went, I went to my home, which is next door. Uh, and, and as it was raining and... I was passing by a lot of wet shrubbery. My my skin did become. You've changed wet. the subject. You just said shrubbery. You never mentioned shrubbery before. 
you just said you went out and got wet. <coughs> now you passed by some trees or some shrubbery and got wet. Oh, no, Mr. Pallow, actually, he said that he went to his home and there were some shrubs, you know, up the garden path, and he brushed against them. <coughs> well, time's up, I'm afraid. That is the last question. Now, panel, I'd like you to write down as many clues as you can and also who you think done it. <coughs> this applies to our audience panel as well because one of you could win our trophy. Now, after the break, the murderer, or is it murderers, will be unmasked and we'll show you how it was done. But I would like to point out to all zoos who are looking in, gorillas are not allowed to take part in the game this week. But if they hang around, we'll be back in a couple of minutes. <laughs> copies of all the cards from the experts so they can't change their minds but first we have a winner from our audience panel and it is let me be quite clear about this <laughs> mrs r wallace from wandsworth in london uh, congratulations mrs wallace uh, you win uh, one of our whodunit trophies congratulations Right, now then, panel, I want you to give us your solution as to who done it and give us a clue. Huey Green. Mm. I think that Lawrence Porter did it. I think Lawrence Porter did it because there was, number one, a spare costume that nobody else could account for. Mm -hmm. Number two, he could not really account for where he was at the time of the murder. And number three, I cannot believe that anybody would accept a reverse charges call and I don't believe that you can get a reverse charges call. In fact, I know you can't get a reverse charges call to Southern Ireland. Thank you, Huey Green. Alfred Marks. Well, like my uh, colleagues here, I believe Lawrence Porter did it for the, for the following reasons. Uh, first of all, how could he possibly identify George at the window when the character was masked? He saw a gorilla and he, he, he identified it as George. Uh, number, number two clue, the phone call was definitely phony, not kosher at all. And the last important clue is actors always need money. <laughs> <laughs> I think, unfortunately, you've stolen the joke of Dawn Adams. Have I? Oh, nevertheless, sorry. Dawn, who done it and why? Well, I said that Lucy Webb did it in cohorts with the actor Porter. <coughs> uh, she arrived early. She was helping the actor Porter, who couldn't have changed his costume because his costume was so complicated. They were partners. Uh, there was a point when they were seen changing suits or helping into suits at the, in the party and the press stud came into it and I said actors and models often need money, I should know. <laughs> <laughs> right, thank you Dawn Adams. Jackie Pallow. I said Richard Duncan did it for the simple reason when the, the two gorillas were in, one was look, looking at the car, the other one was going into the doorway, he was crouched down a bit and he's the tallest of the three and when he was asked to turn round, he wouldn't turn round, probably fearing that his back was wet. That's the reason I believe that he did it. Good. Well, thank you very much indeed. That was extremely interesting, everybody. Now, that's what you think. Those are your theories. Uh, let us see who did done it. So, will the real who done it stand up, please? <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations, Huey Green. I think you pip us to the post, or you pip Alfred Marks to the post because you had your clue absolutely bang on. Many congratulations. You win uh, 50 pounds and a second hand gorilla suit. <laughs> you also win, of course, the Who Done It trophy. Congratulations. Uh, now then. Uh, to stop any further arguments, uh, let's just show you how it was done and the clues that Porter dropped all over the place. While the party was in full swing, Lawrence Porter sneaked out and took the spare gorilla's costume. He went into the bedroom to steal the necklace, 
and was surprised by Mrs. Gibbs. She was killed in the struggle. He slipped out of the bedroom, intending to change out of the gorilla costume, but found the spare room was now occupied. So he went downstairs, out of the side door to his car, to take off the gorilla costume and collect Parkinson. Two things gave him away. He claimed that he saw the bedroom curtains being drawn, which he couldn't have done because the bedroom only had a roll-up blind. And secondly, his alibi of making a reverse charge call to Dublin was impossible because there is no reciprocal agreement for reverse charge calls with error. Well, now you know who done it. But one mystery remains unsolved, and that panel is, where is the necklace? Have you any ideas? Inside the rabbit. rabbit. Of course. Where Inside else? Inside Parkinson. Parkinson? Parkinson. <laughs> <laughs> Poor soul, never mind. I also, I'm afraid, neglected to say, of course, uh, Huey Green, you win £50 to go to a charity of your own choice. Good. Well, that's it. I'm afraid it's the end of the present Who Done It series. Next week, at the usual time, Huey Green will once again be opportunity knocking. Uh, Huey, is there any chance of any gorillas being auditioned in your next show? Next week? Very definitely. And I hope next week that our show is half as exciting as your show has been the last few weeks. Thanks very much indeed. Well, we'll look forward to seeing your show. Thank you, panel. Thank you, cars. That is the end of the series, but there is one last question. Uh, if you had a 275 pound real gorilla as a house pet, uh, where would it sleep? The answer, of course, is anywhere he chooses. <laughs> Good night.